Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over uh, interview questions. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, what to do, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. So today, when I talk about interview questions, I want to go specifically for a uh, star method interview. So these are like behavior questions. They tend to ask you more about what you did, what you have done, and what you achieved. So if you're looking at the star method, um, star will be situational. A situation, task, action, and result. So I actually do have a slide for this. I want to go over this. This video should not be that long, but it's very important when you do these types of interviews because um, I'll give you a real life example. It's important to know about the interviews because you go for Amazon, maybe Microsoft, a lot of these questions are asked like behavior questions to see how you answer and respond to them. So let me share my screen and hopefully this isn't this isn't too boring, it's not, you know, hopefully it's interesting for you guys. So let me go into, uh, let's go to this one. Here we go, oh, there we go. All right, great. So like I said earlier, uh, Star Method interviews, usually it's they, they, they characterize it in sections and I'll break it down in sections. So um, situation is one, task is another, action and result, right? So it slides in that long. So star method consists of some companies use star method for interviews. Uh, examples would be AWS, Amazon, Microsoft, hedge funds, hospitals. They will, they will, they will do this on purpose to see what your strengths and weaknesses are and things like that. So here we go. So what to look for an answer when you come, when you try to answer a star method question. So the candidates understand their own strengths and weaknesses. So you want to ask questions such as, how do you handle, they ask questions like this, how do you handle a project that is going off a deadline or budget? Or do you do, or what do you do when you don't personally like a colleague you work with closely? So they purposely ask you these questions to see how you respond and answer. So how, how do you handle a deadline or a budget? Like what, what, would, what did you do there? Like how do you handle that situation? Or as far as your colleague is concerned, do you get along with him? Do you get along with her? Do you report that person? Like what? How do you handle it? So, they purposely ask you those questions to see if you're gonna give me you give them some sort of wrong answer or an answer that doesn't make any sense, because obviously it's personality questions. If you get along with them, or you try to resolve the problem, it looks good on your end, and it looks good on the interview. But if you're trying to have conflict of interest or, or try to get into a fight with your colleague then obviously that becomes a problem, right? So the other thing is the candidate's potential leadership skills. So ask questions such as talk about your strategy for effective delegation or describe a situation when you show leadership outside of your formal supervisory role. So if you ever done project management or you ever worked as a manager or you've done leadership skills or you've done anything to do with being a leader as a manager and I had to delegate an order of 300 300 orders of food and I delegated a team to get it done. But bes even besides that, I had the team work together with me because one thing is leading and one thing is leading by the example. So I was leading by example by helping the team to handle these 300 orders. So you want to make sure that you, you answer it in a formal way that makes sense. In my situation, I worked at a restaurant and if you're doing the start method, it does not have to be IT related. It could also be outside your outside of your IT task and duty. So I mentioned the scenario of me working at Kidova. So you could do that with any of these jobs you're applying for. You could mention your leadership skills from your previous jobs, whether you were a manager at McDonald's or you were a manager at a different company like Starbucks. It does not have to be IT related, but it has to portray or show how you were a good leader or in how you delegated your leadership skills and things like that of, the, of that nature, if that makes sense. So how well a candidate operates in a challenging situation. So here we go, it's another behavior question. So ask questions such as, describe a time when you disagree with a manager. How did you resolve the conflict? How would you handle the rollout of an unpopular policy as a supervisor? So you will may, you may get asked questions like that. So those things are very important. Like how do you handle a unpopular policy that was passed down by your supervisor? You may not agree with that person, but at the end of the day, it's a policy that got passed down. So you, you have to be somewhere in the middle, you know, in some sort of agreement with that person. Even if you don't, even if you don't like the policy, 
the the answer would be in a way that you actually you actually are okay with using the software and you're not gonna have issues with the software and you may not agree with him or her, but at the end of the day, it has to get done and it's part of the process and procedures, if that makes sense. So rather a candidate can effectively use independent judgment, particularly under pressure. So this is very important. Ask questions such as how would you address conflicting feedback on a project or describe a time where you failed to meet a goal? What happened and why? So this is questions that you get asked and obviously you can't throw your colleagues under the bus. It doesn't make any sense, right? So if you fail to meet a goal, what, what really did happen? Maybe you didn't have enough time. Maybe you didn't have enough personnel. Maybe you were missing some sort of information. Maybe something else happened. We don't know. But you want to make sure that you answer it in a way that it doesn't make your, can your colleagues look bad. And it also doesn't make you look bad. So, and I'll show you some examples of how to answer some of these questions. I, at the end of the slide, I have uh, an example of that. And it would all make sense once we go over that. So let's go over the start method. Remember, we'll, I'm going to go back to the beginning. So we have situation, task, action, and result, right? So situation, the candidate describes the scene and provides a relevant detail of their example. Look for an answer that explains the context of a situation and why it connects to your question. So when you're explaining a situation, it has to connect to the question. You do not want to randomly just say random stuff that has nothing to do with that question or anything to do with the answer. So like, just make it, keep it relevant. Um, don't make it too long, don't make it too short. Keep it uh, sweet and simple, if that makes sense. So that situation, obviously the next one would be task. Next, it kind of describes their role in the situation. This can help you determine what level of responsibility they had in their previous roles. So in this situation, you could describe your task as being in help desk. So maybe your 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 uh, task was to handle tickets that come in the queue, and you must report them and this, and close those tickets in a timely manner. So that would be something that you will put as a task. And obviously, there is action. Then explain how they addressed the situation and what steps they took to overcome this, the challenge. A good answer shows how the candidate added value to the situation and made logical decisions. So an example of, of an example of a, of a situation would be with me where I describe where I actually worked with a migration for uh, Columbus, Ohio, and I had to migrate all our systems or our system networks and switches and routers, including our servers from building A to building B. So I worked together with our project manager and I worked together with the team that moves all our stuff and I had them move everything over. And my responsibility was for me to make sure that everything was moved over in a timely manner, which means that everything was everything was started on Friday and everything had to be done on Sunday. So what I did was, since I was in charge of the migration, I helped the customers move everything over on Friday, from Friday to Saturday, all the way to Sunday. And I had to make sure everything was set up, everything was checked. So I had a checklist that I ran where we checked the networks, we checked the servers. By the end of the task, um, what I did to address the situation was I had customers come in on Sunday morning. I had them log in and I was making sure I was making sure that they were able to log in successfully without having any issues with their computers. I also made sure that their monitors, laptops or whatever they had set up on their desk was an exact duplicate of what they had inside A. Now that I went inside B, I literally took a picture of what their setup was. And I set everything up from point A to point Z, from, from A to Z. I set everything up from their monitors to their keyboards, to their laptops, and everything was set up correctly. And I was able to basically say this project was done. The networks is working. The Wi-Fi is working. The printers are working. Everything was done successfully without any issues. And that would be part of the result. So at the end of their answer, the candidate explains the outcome of the situation. A quality answer that includes a concrete example and quantifies achievements. They should explain the direct efforts of their efforts in their answers. So obviously you wouldn't describe that. So in my situation, I successfully completed the migration and I had the candidates or the customers, not candidates, but customers come in and they were able to log in successfully and they were able to do what they had to do. And we tested everything from A to Z because I did not want to have any issues with any of these customers. 
They're able to log into the domain controller. They're able to use their passwords. They're able to use their applications. They're able to print. The Wi-Fi was working in the building. Uh, we follow a checklist of data and make sure all the data and everything was moved successfully from building A to building B. And we did not have any issues at all. Once all that was completed, I was able to leave I was able to leave that state and go back to New York after that. So everything was done successfully. We had no issues. And Monday morning, just to prevent any weird issues or any, any hiccups, we had people stay in the office on Monday morning just in case they were missing stuff or they needed to help with anything that was not set up correctly. So that was the result for us. Um, that would be an example of what I would use because I have done migrations in the past. You could do any any examples. It does not have to be a migration. It could be a project you worked on with your manager and your team. It could be a migration you did recently. Maybe a change that you made on the network. Maybe a change you made as a network cabin. Maybe a change you made in working in help desk. It does not have to be anything to do with migrations. It could be pretty much anything. So hopefully this makes sense. And hopefully this answers your question. So here's an example of a start for a mad answer. So tell me about a time you overcame a challenging situation at work. So now he's using the start method. Situation, task, action, and result, right? So at a previous job, our senior graphic designer resigned without any notice. Since she led the graphic design team, we initially didn't know what to do in her absence. Now here's the task. As a junior graphic designer, I decided to take it upon myself to make sure that all her work was completed on time and into the can to do can to the can client standards. Excuse me. Um, action is to do this. I met with the creative director and asked him to train me in the areas of her job I was not familiar with. Then I worked through my lunch breaks for a week straight to get the work done. I delegated an easier, easier task to the interns. What was the result? In the end, the, cl the, the client ended up loving the work. We were actually able to get the work done at a day early. The creative director, director was so impressed by my efforts that he, ordered me a pro that he offered me a promotion to become a senior graphic designer. So this is an example of star for format answer. Obviously, everyone's answers will be different, but... I'm gonna stop sharing. So this would be something that you would do if you're doing the star method answers, like Amazon does it, Microsoft does it. I know some financial firms that have asked me some crazy questions that are pertaining to actual star method answers. And I actually got it right and I had, and I had the answers right. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully this helps you out. With that being said, hope, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day, have a wonderful Saturday, and I hope this helps you out if you're doing, doing a job into you. Anyway, have a wonderful one. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.